Hi, my name is Tiffany and I'm the diary maker behind Lenta Valley Fiber Co. On today's episode, I talk about my socks that I'm working on as well as my Afghan hound hat. So if that interests you, stick around and let's jump in. Hi, how are you guys doing today? It is a cloudy day here in Eastern Washington. Um, but the temperature is pretty warm, so lots of outside time, which is fun. And we're um, off of school, so we've been busy with um, play dates and time at the park, so that's kind of fun. I also had some family in town this weekend, and my family had a big get together, so that was kind of fun as well. Big barbecue, and yeah, it's very enjoyable. So. Uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into this week's episode. I am going to post here the video where I talk about um, my shadow wrapped heel for my pair of socks. This is what it currently looks like. And I am in the process of picking up these double stitches here and then once I've done that I'm going to pick up and begin knitting in the round again. So um, the video that I have is how I've started that process of um, picking up so that the heel is um, I'm increasing stitches I guess is what the proper term is. I'm increasing stitches now so that I'll be back up to the same amount that I am for the front. And then I'm that much closer to finishing my husband's socks. Maybe he'll get them by Father's Day. Uh, I've kind of been distracted by a lot of different things that have been going on in life recently. So all good things, but distracted nonetheless. Um, so hopefully he will get these by Let's see, Father's Day is Sunday, so um, I should be done with them. Yeah, I should be. And again, this yarn is the Patton's Croy Sock FX in the colorway Clover, and I found it at Joanne Fabrics. Welcome back. I wanted to do a tutorial on how I go around and pick up these um, double stitches in order to build back up my toe. So I'm going to knit across. To the first double stitch. Again, this heel is called the shadow wrap heel. And I've already finished the first part of the shadow wrap. And now I'm going across to build it back up. So when you get to your first double stitch, which is coming out of a single stitch, you knit those two together and then you make a, so now there's three coming out of here. So from here on out, you'll knit the three stitches together and then make another three stitch before turning your work. Okay, so now we're going to purl back to the first double stitch. And when we get there, it'll be the same process.
Okay, here's the first one. We're going to knit that and then we're going to pick up the stitch below, purl, and place that back on the left needle. And now we have three stitches coming out of that. We're gonna turn our work and knit back. Only we're looking for a triple stitch this time. Okay, here's the triple stitch. So just knit all those together. And then pick up this bar, knit just the bar that you've placed on there. Now you have three. Turn your work. And you do that. Um, until you've picked up all of these double stitches and then you begin knitting in the round again. So that's where I'm at with my husband's socks. Uh, the next project that I've been working on is the Afghan Hound hat. And I told you all that I would be done with that. <laughs> no problem by this week. Well, I'm not done with it. Uh, I have gotten into the third skein so this is the third um, of four skeins and I'll be able to finish it up with this this is where I'm at I am in the decrease um, part of the hat so the crown up here this is what it looks like so far and um, the interesting thing about it is that it went from this marled look here on this inch or so, maybe two inches, to I added in a different skein of yarn. And that skein of yarn was slightly different in um, the ply. So it had more of a dark stripe and then a light stripe and then a dark stripe and then some marling and then a dark stripe and a light stripe. <laughs> so um, it's an interesting hat in color, but I don't think it looks bad actually. It all goes together, it's all the same color. So um, I think it's going good. Now I did knit um, for eight inches, which is the from the cast on edge actually, um, then I knit two inches of the rib, which is a two by two, knit two, purl two. And then I started just knitting for eight, um, a total of eight inches from the cast on. Then once I hit the eight inches, I started the decreasing. And what I did there is I have my stitch markers here um, and I placed them every 10 stitches and then I knew when I came around to them that knit two together, knit one, slip the marker. And so that's what I've done. Now on the first round I did it that way. The second round after that first decrease I just knit. And then I did another decrease row and then another row of knit. And then I did decreases every row. So I think the hat will fit um, the gal that it's going to just fine. Um, this is how I typically do my decreases and my hats. So um, I would put it on, but I don't want it to fall off my needle. So. Um, I will, will I have it for next week's video? I might. 
Um, I'll show you the finished project then. Or else I'll post a picture online <laughs> if I give it to her early. So there you go. And again, this is knit out of two different Afghan hounds. One was a dark brown and the other one was a fawn colored. Um, and then those two were spun together. So yeah. Thank you for the comment in last week's video about um, how warm dog hair actually is. And so I was sitting on the porch this week knitting on this and it was pretty warm on the porch. And I would knit around and then set it down and my hands were sweaty. So um, yeah, I'd, I think it'll keep her plenty warm when uh, it comes right down to it. So that's it for my Afghan Hound knit hat. It's almost there. I'm, I'm, I'm ever closer, ever closer. So I have yet to cast on the two projects that I had talked about in last week's video. And um, as I was contemplating those projects, uh, the first one is the um, Potomac Worsted. And these, both of these patterns are by Nitty McPurley, Devon Ventry. This one, I had talked about using that pink yarn that I had um, tried to custom dye for a customer and it didn't quite turn out how she wanted it. So I thought, oh, I could use that. But deep down, I really wanted a dark gray. So instead of using that pink, um, I'm doing an order, a large order of bear yarn um, in two weeks. So I'm gonna buy a little extra of the worsted weight yarn and I'm going to dye it specific for this project and do the dark gray. Um, I have a dark gray in my shop that I absolutely love and I think it would look perfect in this pattern. So that's what I originally wanted was a gray. That's what I'm going to do for this one. All right, and then for the Vesper sweater, also by Devin Ventry of Nitty McPurley, I have not decided yet what to do um, with the contrast color. So, and one of the things that, I don't know if there's a picture here a little bit closer, maybe this one. My um, actually, this one might work. The coloring page one. I initially loved this pattern because of my body shape. I thought it was a good pattern that would kind of hide some of the lumps, and. Um, as I've studied the pattern a little bit, I am, have come to the conclusion that it won't necessarily um, cover all of my lumps. <laughs> so I'm thinking, um, and specifically because of the band here. So it's a bat wing which I thought would cover my middle section a little bit better and kind of hide the fat there. <laughs> um, but then this section right here where the ribbing is comes in tight just below your waist and kind of at the top of your pant line. And so I, I don't know that that's going to be a good look for me. I tend to do boxy tops because they 
your kind of wider um, up here and then it just goes straight down and it kind of skims your midsection where I carry my weight. And so I thought, oh, well, I'm going to need to convert this a little bit. And so if you look at um, the model, who is Devin, by the way, um, she is very slim. And so it looks fabulous on her. Um, and as it comes in at her waist here, it's not adding, it doesn't make an issue around her waist because she doesn't have any extra right there. So it looks fabulous on her. But I thought that it might not look so good on me um, for that reason, because it pulls in and then it's going to end up um, exposing or framing my middle section, which is my least favorite part of my body. So I thought, how easy would it be to, instead of do this ribbing here, just continue knitting and then do like an I-cord bind off at the bottom so that it's straight down here instead of cinched in. So I don't know. I, I'm still thinking about that. Um, and trying to decide if it's worth knitting this particular pattern um, for that reason. Now, I did go online and I looked at um, people who have done her pattern and there are all different sizes of and body shapes. So I just don't know if it's for me though. <laughs> I guess that's more the main point is, am I going to feel comfortable wearing this somewhat tight around my waist area or hips, slightly below the waist, but hips. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, which I know isn't a lot. But you know, I feel like if you're gonna spend 80 some hours knitting a sweater, you better be able to wear it. Or else, what's the point? <laughs> you might as well go buy a $10 sweater at the thrift store, you know. Um, and part of it too is I like the process of knitting. I love learning new techniques. I love just knitting and knitting and then, oh, doing something a little different and then knitting. You know, I love that whole process. So for me, the product isn't necessarily the end result for me. Although I do have sweaters that I've knit and I wear. Um, but again, like I said, they're more the boxy style. And um, I like those because they hide a lot of flaws um, or body um, image problems that I think I have. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's an ongoing conversation because designers are trying to make their patterns um, inclusive of all shapes and sizes. My thing is those designs may not look that great on all shapes and sizes. Um, so you have to find what style works for you and then that's what you knit. And I just, part of me is, I get excited about um, you know, the color of the sweater or the, like this one was really exciting because I've never actually done a bat wing before and it looks super comfortable. Um, that's what drew me initially. But then I'm realizing, hmm, don't know that the waist is going to look great 
on me. So can I modify it to make the waist look better? And then I can still get the bat wing effect with not the cinched in waist. So there's that too. You just have to modify it to work for you. And this cardigan, um, you know, it, it doesn't have those issues because cardigans, you can have them open or you can pull them closed and be comfy and you know, that kind of thing. Um, cardigans don't really need a shape, I don't think, because you're partially, they're partially open. So that's my thought on those two patterns um, a little bit that I didn't cover last week. So um, the plan is I'm going to dye worsted weight yarn in about two weeks. I'm going to order, I, I need another big order of yarn uh, to dye. And then in that process, I will dye for that and start it first part of July. Oh yeah, that'll be good. Cause then that will get me, I should be done by the time fall rolls around, which will be great, perfect timing, uh, perfect time to wear that. And then I may or may not do the Vesper sweater. Um, yeah, I think I just need to look through the pattern again and see if it's worth doing for my body type. So yeah, that's where I'm with, with that. So that's it for knitting. I um, don't have any macrame to show this week. I was kind of busy doing um, other things. So less of the macrame keychains. Um, I also don't have any crochet or spinning. So I guess this is a short episode this time around. But uh, again, I will put in some um, bonus content in the middle with uh, my socks and then I have a little bit of just me knitting um, here to put in at the end. So thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Happy Father's Day to the dads out there and I hope everybody spoils you rotten. <laughs> I know I'm planning to spoil my husband and my son is going to make him a little something. And then my dad is I'll see him on Monday and I got a little special treat for him too. So happy Father's Day and I'll see you in the next video.